So, um, everybody has a story, uh, a moment where your life changes. It's either a moment or event, uh, things happen and all of a sudden you become this different person. Um, for me, this was not exactly the case in this m moment. Um, I was uh, standing here um, in a bathroom in an airport 12,000 miles away from home in a foreign country where I didn't speak the language, staring into a mirror saying, how the hell did I get here? But it was actually my planning uh, that ended up in the situation where I was at. I... Um, so, uh, surprisingly enough, this was the second time that I was in this airport halfway across the world in a point that would change my life forever into a new chapter. I was adopted, and back in 1978, in December, I was in this airport as a little baby, and at that point, An Seong Su was, his life was ending, and I was about to depart on this plane as Nathaniel Hallmark, which explains, you know, why I look different and the name doesn't quite match. But um, I was uh, adopted into a family in uh, Pennsylvania. I was raised in a small white community. Uh, it was very much like Saratoga, to give you a little of a, a, a arrangement, minus the horses, but just all the other like environmental fields. My father was from Texas. My mother was raised um, by Pennsylvania Dutch parents, and my parents, uh, my grandparents spoke Pennsylvania Dutch often to me when yelling at me as a child. So I understood more Pennsylvania Dutch than they did Korean. They raised me, though, just to be like everybody else. They wanted to make sure that I was no different than everybody else, which on the side meant that I wasn't raised Korean. So I always knew who my parents were, who my family was, and where they were from. But when I look at a mirror, I had a little bit of an identity crisis because I didn't know what it meant to be Korean. I didn't know where I came from. I didn't know what the culture was like. I didn't know all those things that people normally have with the family. If you're not adopted, you see where you get your eyes from or you laugh like Uncle Bill or your mom's eating habits came across. I never had that. So it was always a mystery to me. Well, by the time uh, growing up, um, you know, my dad uh, got sick uh, when I was 12. He passed away. A couple years later, my grandparents had passed away. And by 2012, my mom had passed away too. So at one point, I realized, you know, that everything that I, I had, all my family was back to being gone again. So there it was again with, you know, out having a family. Um, it was uh, at that point that um, I realized that I really should probably reach out and find out, you know, what else is out there. And coincidentally, about three months after my mom died, I got a call uh, from the Eastern Welfare Society because when I was younger, when I was a teenager, I received a letter from my birth mother. And at the time, I was 18 when I got it. And when you're 18, you're kind of figuring out everything else that there is in the world. And you get a letter from the person that gave you up at adoption as a baby you really don't know what to say at that point. So the letter got shelved and years went by. Um, things kind of came along. I got married, got kids of my own. As we, uh, the letter came up again uh, a couple years later when I was in college, I met a woman who was Korean. And uh, it turns out when you write in Korean, it can have a different meaning in the way it's written. And the first letter that I got, the first translation of this letter was, Thank you for raising my son. I uh, was you know, a little bit young when we had him. and couldn't take care of him, but I appreciate you, know, you doing this for us. It was very dry. But when I met this woman who spoke and read Korean, she had read it to me. And the moment that she started reading it, I could just see the emotion wall up. And she immediately responded by saying, this woman really misses you and cares about you. And you should definitely right back. And at that moment, I realized that there had been something lost in translation. So I was like, okay, started the search again. Gets to the point where finally the Eastern Welfare Society gets back to me and they said, I think I've found your parents. And this is right after I lost my mom. So I'm like, oh, cool. So I got like a reset button on having a family again. So things happen. Life keeps on moving on. A few years later, I end up getting a divorce, going through a really bad custody battle, having my kids get separated from me for a while, so I had to deal with all that. Life happens uh, in every other event that seemed to happen to me. It didn't make sense at the time, but 
I got through it and eventually my midlife crisis came through got through that and along the way I was like you know what I just need to figure this out so I end up on the plane and here I am in this bathroom staring at myself in the mirror saying that what are you doing here and it all of a sudden hits me I'm like I'm also about ready to meet my birth family this mystery like yeah when you're staring at the face of something you wondered all your life and it's about to hit you you're like oh it is actually gonna happen it's happening now so I get out of the bathroom and I get through customs and I make it to the door um you know, keep in mind, the only thing that I had was this letter to go off of. I was talking to my cousin through Facebook Messenger who was translating to give me some vague directions. The pictures of my family that I had were still like 20 years old. I'm walking through the airport realizing, wow, I have old photos that are 20 years old. I'd never been in an environment before where it was all Asian people, so I'm looking around, I'm like, you guys weren't kidding, we all do look alike. I had no idea what I was looking for. The door opens at the tar uh, finally, after I get to the costume, the door opens and there's this man standing there with curly hair and glasses, and he walks up to me very, very casually, not with a big greeting or smile, but just kind of walks up to me, grabs my bag, and then he holds my hand and starts leading me down the airport, and I'm like, okay, either this is one of those cultural differences or, is, or I have a really ambitious taxi driver trying to take me somewhere. I wasn't really sure. Um, the curly hair really threw me off too because I didn't have curly hair, so I, I don't know who this guy is. Turns out it was my father and he permed his hair. Apparently it's something that they do. So I didn't realize that at first. But as we're walking, so he leads me down the airport way, and we're walking, we're walking, and I see another group of people down there. Now, keep in mind, it is a cultural difference with our American smiles. We're always in that airport, and we're like, hey, how are you? It's good to see you. And, you know, being that, you know, it's the first time that my family actually see me, you would expect something like that. Nope. It's an Asian, like, hi, how are you? Yeah, thanks. So there was no big reaction or anything. So I'm kind of like just really winging it with the gut feeling, trying to figure out, okay, so that's probably my family at this point we're walking down and it was um they look very bottled asian up uh, like excited to see me like i'm like and i'm like hey so i'm trying to do the same thing because like you know this this has been like almost 40 years that have passed by what do you do when you first see your family you know you, you don't know so just trying to play it as cool as possible and then i see my mo my mother this older woman that just kind of kind of resembles me and this is the first time that I really had any resemblance of me to ever look at period so I'm looking and I see her face and she's got a, like got that very casual held back smile and she hands me up a phone now keep in mind the only way we're really communicating in general is through phone and translator and everything so she reaches up and she's got that little smile going still uh and I'm like oh okay this, this is my mother she's gonna this is like the first thing that she's going to actually have to say to me, right? And uh, I was like, oh, you know, excited but still calm. Grab the phone, and I look at the phone screen, and it says, clear as day, I feel like a homo. <laughs> and it took me about a brief second to not fall over dying laughing because I couldn't do that at that point. I didn't want to be like, hi, here's your long-lost son. He's a laughing idiot. It was... So I'm standing there and I'm like trying to figure out what it was trying to say to me. And it was that she was happy, which translated to I feel gay, which somehow was lost in translation to I feel like a homo. <laughs> so all I could do is stand there trying not to laugh because I'm thinking, God, I hate you, but this is funny. Um, it was just one of those moments. And as I'm standing there, I knowing that none of them can understand me, I'm like, you feel like a homo. I don't know who this phone is translating for, but I just walked down the aisle with a strange man with curly hair, hand in hand. Yeah, I'm thinking it was translating for me. <laughs> but as it, as it kept on going on, they, it was my family, and it, it was you know everything. But the, the whole environment was so strange, and, and, and but that was you know the beginning of my story and the beginning of the adventure that I had. I ended up finding out way more than I thought about myself. My story ended up turning out to be much more coincidental. In a summary, it turns out that they were young, too young to have me. My father was 
going into the military, I was born with a cleft lip and palate, which meant that I was born with this gaping hole in my mouth. And if I wasn't getting the right medical care, I would have grown up in a horrible lifestyle over in, in a country that was just becoming developing. So my her sacrifice that she made, their sacrifice that they made was so I could have a better life. You can't learn a harder lesson than loving enough some, loving someone so much that you need to let them go. Turns out that was the story that I actually had about me and everything that had happened from the moment that I was born, even before that, had led me to get adopted, to find my way through life on this side of the world. Even more interestingly, like the loss that I had through my parents realizing what it meant to be separated as a child from their sons, from their parents, and from the parents after having a kid of my own being able to understand what it would mean to lose a child or have to give up a child for, and then live with that for 40 years later, not knowing, and to get to that one moment where even though you have no idea what each other is saying, except that one might be a homo and one might not be. It, it was all meant to happen for a reason. And surprisingly, as it ends up, all the things that happened, all those bad things that I mentioned before, like that, yeah, losing the parents, losing the grandparents taught me the regret, the loss, um, losing my kids and having to go through the doors and understanding the, the value that your children mean to you, all that stuff led me to this final point of appreciation, even though I really could never translate that. I mean, if it can't get happy right, how is it going to get all those other things that I meant to say right? I knew it, though, through everything that life had brought me to and everything that I had brought to them, we both were able to know that it was all meant to teach me to be prepared at this one moment where we could embrace each other and say, everything that happened was okay because it all happened for a reason. And in the end, it was more amazing for me to look back and say, wow, I get it now. It wasn't just that one of it. It was everything that led it up to that point, which made finally everything make sense. So never doubt you know, whatever you're going through, whatever happens, because you'll never see it on your way there. But looking back, it's amazing the feeling that you get when all of a sudden everything, no matter how bad or crazy or mistranslated it may be, it makes sense. And in the end, it does.